Welcome back to interference. Okay, by now you should have known how you can have two waves or like two sources coming together. They interfere, as you can see, they're overlapping at some places and they form a very interesting pattern. Now you need to know what are maxima and see this first order maxima. What on earth does that mean? Well, maxima means bright spots where you have constructed interference. Can you see the patterns? Okay, so if I enable this, this center line is where you, of course, have constructed interference. Okay, all these green lines you see are crests. You can say that. Uh, and also, you will have what we call a bright fringes here, here, and here. These are the maxima. So this zero order, first order, maxima, first order, maxima. Okay, so you need to know where these lines come from. And you see this angle, theta? That just means from the center line up to either the first maxima up there or the first maxima down there. That's 16 degrees. This will be useful when we do our stuff today. Okay, and you also need to know from previously the basics. What happens when you change certain variables? Wow, look at this beautiful pattern. Okay, so uh, there are a few things you can change in these kinds of experiments. Okay, so yeah, we know that interference, they got a nice pattern, constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive. What if you change the length to the screen? You bring the screen closer. How would, it, how would your pattern change at the screen? Okay, uh, if you change the wavelength, this is like 400 nanometers, so probably ultraviolet purple color things. What if you change the wavelength to let's say red color? How are these lines spread out? How do they change, you see? Smaller wavelength, all the maxima are closer together. Okay, wow, these are very fun, I can go play with it, okay? So let's say, like, let me leave it at yellow, orangey. Uh, how about slit separation? Slit, slit separation is, in today's case, between the two sources at a certain distance, right? So if you change this, make them very close, wow, look what happens to the lines. You bring the D very big, make the sources further apart, the lines change too. So all these things we're going to learn today, um, not just in terms of water waves anymore, but also in terms of light waves. Because previously we know, okay, like water waves drip, drip, drip. Sure. Well, what about light let's try the light experiment so light experiment you can have well i guess you can have two lasers or you can have a screen okay uh, but anyway let's see let's say i have two source over here and then i do the same thing green light okay sure then you will have the same interference pattern happening like what we did with the water waves but we're going to look at what we call Young's double slit experiment today. So we're not putting two lasers anymore, or two light sources. We're going to use slits to help us out here. Okay, we're going to start out with the double slit experiment. Okay. So maybe I have some light source. I don't know why is it. Uh, here it says water wave. Very interesting. Actually, we can change that to light. Okay, let's change that to light. Sure. You can have light coming out on one side. But when it passes through these two slits, then it becomes like the two source interference that we looked at already. Lo. Okay, you have a pattern coming here, a pattern coming there. But we're going to do the additional thing of not just looking at the pattern. We want to see what is formed on a screen if you shine light across it. So here, if I put a screen, there will be spots where there's bright, dark, bright, dark. This bright uh, is where constructive interference occurs. This black color is dark, so destructive interference, the light cancel out each other from both slits. Okay, this is a two source. Here also, um, bright, dark, okay, okay, all the same things, okay. And we also want to know what is the intensity. Ooh, very nice graph. Intensity here is basically how bright is it, lor. So here, very bright, so here got something very bright. Here, very bright also, but not as bright as the middle, okay, lah. Okay, so this is what I call just now the zero order maxima. Here is a first order maxima, maximum brightness, you know. Okay, and this is the pattern we will be looking at today a lot. You also need to know, of course, when you change the slit width. Why well, the slit very big, then how the pattern will change. Let's wait until the pattern reach there. Zoom, 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 zoom. Wow, slit very big. The patterns change. Okay, so you go play around with this simulation. So you can find it in the OneNote. You can also find it in the link of the description below okay, to help us under understand all this better today. Okay, let's go and see what is, what is the equation behind this idea. How do we know what slits and what order and things like that? 
So here's the setup you want to know how to describe this experiment. This is called Young's Double Slit Experiment. I guess this person discovered like, oh, light behaves like a wave. Oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, it's kind of similar to the animation we saw. You're going to have a single slit plate. Here you have a sodium vapor lamp. La, so it's going to emit only one wavelength. Okay, not white light. White light, like this one. Okay, this white light. Wow, very bright. White light has a lot, a lot of different wavelengths. But if you use a sodium vapor lamp, it will only emit one wavelength. If you're curious to know why, go and take chemistry. Energy levels and emission spectra. Okay, that's for another another day. Anyway, you're going to emit one wavelength. And also, you're going to use a double slit plate. So you're splitting the thing. So it's like a uh, coherent and one wavelength all the way. La. Okay, so this is a s experimental setup. So here you have the double slit plate that we talk, that we looked at. It's going to split the one wave into two, leaking through two sources. And then all the waves will interfere. This is in 3D already, the drawing. And you will come to this screen over here. Okay, so what you're going to see on the screen are those bright and dark fringes. And we're going to use the fringes to, I guess, measure the wavelength of light. We can do that. A lot of people do different, different kind of studies here. And yeah, you, inside here, the, the separation between the bright and dark fringes are actually quite small. That's why you need a magnifying glass to see the pattern. And then you put a ruler to measure the distance between the bright and dark fringes. That's all Young's double slit experiment is about. So Young did this experiment, looked at the math behind it, and came up with some interesting ideas. Okay, so if we generally look at this, okay, I'm going to rename this a little bit, by the way. I'm going to call this A. Wow, this is way too big. A is the uh, slit separation. Okay, here you got one slit. Here you got another slit for the light to come through. Okay, A is just a slit call. We call slit separation. I'm going to rename this to D. D is just the distance between your uh, slits and the screen where you will see the pattern form. Okay. And all these pictures are, whenever you see this picture of line, 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 these are what we call fringes. La. It's what we see on the screen, the bright lines and dark lines. And it basically tells us what the intensity is at a certain point. You may also see some of these squiggly line graphs, which is basically the same thing, uh, but sideways. Anyway, I'm also going to rename this as X. So you can change that in the diagram if you're writing notes on the handout. All right, so what do we have here? As we mentioned previously, the if you have two sources, dead in the center will be your brightest, biggest fringe. And this is what we call the zeroth order maxima. There's a fancy name for it. Zeroth order maxima. And then as you uh, go along, it will change a little bit. But this is where constructive interference occurs. So you could say... There's no path difference between both waves, so zero wavelength apart. If you're wondering why, stay tuned. Okay, and then if you come to, let's say, the first position here. Okay, I'll just put an X. That's where you can say that's the one wavelength difference apart, also known as the first order maxima. If you're wondering, where's the minima miss? Man, the black color thing inside there. Too crowded, I don't label everything. So just know that this is the minima is the black color stuff in between. La. Okay. And whoops, where did my drawing go? There it goes. Okay, and we keep going. First, two wavelength path difference, three wavelength path difference, four wavelength path difference. All related to the previous. So it's a second order, third order, fourth order maxima so on and so forth if you go down the other angle that's the same thing first order second order third order fourth order all constructive if you want to know the destructive then you just do along here is for 0 0.5 minima right here in the black fringe okay just know the maxima la mainly all right so whenever we say uh some angle uh, that angle is going to go from, whenever you see a theta, you're going from the middle line to, I guess, let's say this first one. Now this diagram is a bit funny. It's like, why go here straight then curve? Ah, yeah, never mind. Uh, 
Uh, anyway, so if I say theta, that means theta is from the center x to whatever maxima you're trying to measure on the screen in the experiment. Okay, and then if you're measuring x, then it'll be x1 of that maxima. You can measure how far away is it from your zero. Mm. Okay, how far is it from the zero? And that's the whole idea that this guy Young, 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 Mr. Young was looking at. And he came up with some interesting discoveries. To summarize, I'll summarize a short version and then you can see the reason why behind this. So just by playing with lights and measuring how far apart these bright fringes are, you can tell what is the wavelength of light. Very nice. So that's how people measure wavelength of light. Okay, so, so here's some fun facts, fun facts, first facts. Okay, at any point on the screen, you can know what the path difference is. Oops, point on screen. Actually, there is a formula for you to know, okay? Previously, you know you calculate delta L and things like that, but here you can shortcut almost and say the path difference of any point on the screen between the two sources is what we say A sine theta. Where does A sine theta come from? Hang on a second. It's A sine theta. Okay, quick refresher on what path difference is in case you forgot already. This is something like our path difference, okay? You have a light coming from one slit, a light coming from another slit, and then they'll have some path L1, L2. And this path difference is... There's no path difference, they're the same length when you're pointing, when you're looking at the middle fringe. But as you move this, you're looking at different, different positions or then you have path difference already, like L1 and L2 are different lengths now. Okay, so L is related to that. The angle is this green angle right here, kind of a bit small. But that is the theta that we're looking at. Okay, so delta L is this thing right here. L1, L2 is the paths from the slits. Ooh, look, we have destructive interference occur here. What's happening here? Constructive interference occurring here. What about this side? Hmm. Constructive interference with a path length difference of 400 nanometers. Okay. These are basically what I'm trying to do. If you, as you go along, you have constructive. Then you go destructive somewhere here. Yep. Then you have constructive, destructive, all because of path difference. Okay. Everything that we've looked at in the previous. Okay. So now we're just looking at the formulas that will give us handy shortcuts on calculating that. So that's this one. Path difference. The first shortcut. Second point to know about this experiment is for small angles theta, okay, what point are you looking at along the whole range? For small angles theta, you can summarize this whole Young's double state experiment with one equation. That is lambda equals to ax over d. Wow, look at that beautiful thing. What does this mean? So lambda, first things is, of course, the wavelength of your light. Actually, let me put a box around this. It's an important equation you will want to remember or write down. Mm. So lambda is your wavelength of your light that you're using. Only oh, you should have one wavelength uh, of light. I guess you could use water too, sure. Usually it's done for light. D here, as we've looked at the diagram, is your separation or distance. I guess you say distance. Lah. Separation between the screen and your slits. Okay, so D here is our, this D, right there. Man, if I could put this both in one screen. Let me adjust that a bit. Okay, we arranged already. Ah, nice thing about all online recordings, I can adjust stuff. Anyway, where were we? Yes, so we have D, it's separation between the slits. How far apart are you from your screen? A here, sometimes you will use, you will see some books use D for that thing. But A here is what we call the fringe separation. Fringe separation. Separation. So how far apart are those two sources? Okay, the one we looked at just now. And of course, lastly, the very important one, X. Sometimes you see textbooks use Y, X or Y. It's just distance between the bright fringes, also known as 
Oh, fringe. Se- Why did I write fringe separation up there? My bad. Sorry about that. This one is fringe separation. This one on top is slit separation. That's correct. Okay. So that's whole the whole idea of this topic. You need to know how to use this equation. Okay. But where does this equation come from? It's also good to know this because they can ask you certain things about this thing. So let's take a look at the idea, the proof. Yeah, where does this formula come from? In what conditions can you apply it? 